who recognized uh, me by naming a building after me. That's very impressive. <laughs> Without giving money, right? I didn't give any money. I gave sweat. I gave lots of sweat. Anyway. There's one story you, you told me last time I was here. I believe you said it was Governor Wilkinson and you were walking through Mays Hall trying to get renovation money and a part of the ceiling fell out. I don't remember the ceiling falling uh, out. A piece of the wall or, or, or something happened. Yeah. Well, you're talking about... Uh, 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 Mays Hall. Mays Hall, yeah. Yeah. When I arrived on campus, and, and you can put this on tape if you want to, can I describe what yeah. what the cabin, what the campus was like? Fields Hall was being used by frats and sororities uh, at Halloween time. They would um, they'd pay a small fee, and then they were assigned areas in the uh, Fields Hall uh, to have. Halloween affairs um, because it was empty and there were uh, broken chairs and broken beds and old mattresses and all over the building and from the outside it looked terrible. Mays Hall um, had uh, cardboard in some of the windows plywood in some of the windows and from the outside it just looked terrible and I said to myself how can I go out and tell people what a great institution we want to be and want them to join us to make it when if they drive down the boulevard and that was it, that's what they did that they saw a maze hall with cardboard and plywood in the windows and not being used and Fields Hall not being used and used as a, I, I'm trying to think of what that's called in Halloween time, uh, where they have haunted, haunted uh, houses and haunted areas. Well, that's what they did in, um, in Fields. So, I had five years, better get started. So, uh, I got the money from the legislature and some bonding. I don't remember exactly what, how we did that for two residence halls. We rebuilt Fields Hall, completely remodeled it. We completely remodeled Mays Hall into little apartments. That was my idea. Um, then what about Grody Thompson? We stripped it. It had not been improved. It was built in 1927. Um, each room had one receptacle, one light bulb hanging down from the top, one little bowl to wash in. They went to a, a, um, a community shower. How do you recruit students in today's age, I'm talking about 20 years ago of course, um, to, a, to a campus? Now the faculty, I noticed in, uh, in uh, one of the books that was written, whether they were speaking for the faculty or for themselves, but they criticized me for uh, spending so much money on the residence halls. You know, Well, first of all, money on residence halls, capital can't be spent any other way besides building. So it, I couldn't put it in salary and other things. Well. We tore, we tore the inside out of uh, Grody Thompson. As soon as we started tearing it out, the contractor brought me over. And he said, I want you to see something. He took me in and showed me bare wires where that old, where that old uh, wiring that you, you've seen wrapped in a kind of a cloth-like uh, material, it had fallen off all over the place. And we, he found 
that the kids have been putting in pennies in the meter instead of fuses because they were always blowing fuses. We had the most dangerous building you could ever imagine with with the pennies in the in the in where the fuses should be and, and those wires bare. We could have we could have had a disaster. So we were so pleased to tear the inside of that 20, 1927 building down, out. And uh, by the way, they did an unusual thing in building that building, I might comment on. Um, most of the time you see buildings built, they, they put in the infrastructure in the, in the ground and they build from the bottom up, right? That building was built upside down. They started up on the third floor and build it down because they were using laser for the first time on campus. That's what they did. They, they finished the first, the third floor first and went to the second, third, first and basement from the top down. I thought that was original and different. Okay, you've heard enough of me. <laughs> well, there, there was a, uh, a governor that was with you once, right? That yeah. Looking at the, the the dorms when you wanted money. Well, that was the time. Governor was it Governor Wilkinson? Uh, no, for Governor Wilkinson. Well, he might have been. He yeah, he was the pre <coughs> He was the governor when we did the tunnel. Yeah, but we worked another deal with him. Where did the brownies come in? Hmm? Didn't Wilma bake brownies to help get? Now oh, this is this what the, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> um, you know, you have to do something, this is my psychology, you have to do something to um, be, have a different relationship with people. You can, you can create that relationship if you know how to do it. Sometimes that's hard to do. Anyway, I found out that he was a chocoholic, that he loved chocolates. You want to put this on tape? You can. Um, we were eating a uh, the governor's support, personal support. You see, in the legislature, if the governor puts your proposal in his bill, the, the legislature is always working with his bill. Now, they may not accept it, they make adjustments, but it's, it, you can guarantee that it's on the docket. A lot of people think that if you get a legislator doing something for you, that'll work, but it's a hard way you eventually have to get the governor's signature anyway. So I figured out if I could get the governor to have a personal interest, and the way you get him to have a personal interest is he has to have a personal interest in you. So I worked to become a friend. And I found out that he was an alcoholic. He was an <laughs> alcoholic. You want to strike that? He was a chocoholic. He was a chocoholic. Um, so. My wife makes wonderful brownies. Everybody brags on them. No one makes them as well as she does. She has a special menu. So I said to her, would you make me a pan of brownies? I'm going to take them to the governor. Go ahead. It'll shut off in just a minute. Thank you for interrupting. Um, 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 so the first time I went to the governor to to lay that case before him, I took him a whole bunch of brownies. Well, he never did forget that. And he began to be interested in me and all. Well, we decided the thing to do is get him up here. So we invited him. I encouraged this, but I didn't do it, to, to be the uh, grandmaster of one of our parades. Okay. Well, he's got enough ego that he liked that. So he became the, the grandmaster, if that's what the right name is, of the parade. Is that is a different name for that? Grand Marshal. Grand Marshal of the parade. Um, so he came and did that. And we had a stand, a viewing stand built. And uh, he was to get out of his car 
and come and get up into the viewing stand and view the rest of the parade. Well, Wilma brought a pan of brownies. And when he came down off of the platform, of course I was up there too, but the two of us presented him with a box of brownies. We never forgot that. And every time we would come, he would say, where are my brownies? <laughs> and I always remembered. <laughs> and um, so I, I wrote a little paper saying that Wilma's brownies were worth $13 million because that was a little angle that we played. It made a difference, I think. He got behind my project and told the legislature that that project's on my, my uh, budget and I don't want it touched. And uh, we got the money to put in a tunnel that was built in 1927. Okay. Right. Well, I think that covers it. Does it? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I expect you think I'm pretty crazy. I <laughs> know. Do you have anything you'd like to ask for the PLA or anything? Sure. Ask anything you want to. What do you think it takes to be a successful leader in higher education? You talked a lot about psychology, but that's not something everybody has. What kind of generic wisdom might you want to tell people about how to be successful as a leader? I think you have to be a futurist, a person that's not just looking at today, but looking at tomorrow. Uh, a person that is, uh, finds change easy easy to do rather than finding change hard to do i think he needs to be a change change agency um an agent i'm sorry um dr dorn was a change agent he was a futurist he was always looking down the road um, uh, I think you do need to understand people. I think you, I'm saying, I hate to say this because I think I was one, but I think you have to be a people person. Um, enjoy people. Not look down on people, but consider them equals. When I sat down around the table with the deans, I didn't say, you know, you, you've, you're different than I. I didn't imply it at all. I said, we're, we're a colleague. We're here to do the important thing for the university. It doesn't matter what roles we have. We're all important. I think it takes a person that can thank people. Thanks are the cheapest thing you've got. And I patted people on the back and I thanked them. I think you have to give jobs to people and not tell them how to do it. Tell them what you want to do with it. That's important. You know, I never did sit down and say, now, here's what I want you to do and, and outline it in detail. I would sit down with people and say, now, now I need such and such. I need, a, I need, a, I need a, some, some, something, some data. I need to understand it and have it. But I didn't have, tell them all the lines to make and all the facts. I told him what I wanted and how I was going to use it. And you need to do a lot of that. People, you've got to use techniques that leave people creativity. Give them creativity. They want to create. They want to, they want to do things. They don't want to just follow orders. Now I'm telling you all about that. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you've been involved with interviewing people for the President's Leadership Academy yes, I have. for years and years. And I hope you let You're me... You're on my list. Let me one more time, at least. I'll email you those dates. We finally got them. They're not in my brain at the okay. moment. Okay. You know, I'm a list maker. <laughs> but what, 
For the people that are starting that experience, is there any advice you would give them about what they need to do during, you're gonna be part of picking the people that are in that group. What advice would you give to the people that are selected about that? I would tell them, experience? I would tell them to set, go set their goals and then develop plans that support those goals and prepare for the goals. You know, you've got to prepare if you want promotions. You don't just sit around your office and get a promotion. You get a promotion because you've prepared for the promotion. Sometimes that means going to school. I went to get my master's degree. I wanted to be a college person. I got a doctor's degree. I wanted to be a president and I prepared for the presidency, didn't I? That's what I'm talking about. That's what worked for me, and I've looked around, and that's what successful people do. Okay. Here's your copy. Thank you.